One morning, late in the spring of 1994, Klaus Martens finished spraying pesticides on his cornfield. He went to lift the sprayer to put it away, but he couldn't pick it up, which was strange because Klaus had been lifting the sprayer the same way for many years. He tried again, and again he could not lift it. My right arm just wouldn't work, he told me one night more than 20 years later as we sat around his kitchen table. Less than an hour before, I could loft a bale of hay one-handed over my head. He could, his wife Mary Howell said. He absolutely could. It's my first memory of falling for Klaus. We had just started dating, and I remember coming to the farm to visit. I walked up to the barn, and from the distance, I could see Klaus towering over everyone, grabbing 100-pound bags of grain feed and tossing them, literally, like they were feathers. I didn't know someone could be so strong. Klaus, looking shy, reached across the table for the homemade butter, which Mary Howell keeps in a white bucket that's frequently passed during meals. He gently dug his spoon in deep. I started having muscle spasms, he continued, dropping the mound of butter on a slice of Mary Howell's homemade bread. Terrible spasms that went up and down the right side of my body. I remember standing there by the stove when he walked in the house with his big, protective Tyvek suit still on. We called it the zoot suit. And green plastic gloves, Mary Howell said. I knew something was wrong. I think I said, something is really wrong, Klaus said, softly. I thought something wasn't right weeks before, Mary Howell said. I was out in the yard on a beautiful June afternoon with our son, our daughter was on the way, and I smelled something I didn't like. It was 2,4-D, Klaus said, referring to the chemical herbicide commonly used to control weeds. It was, yes, absolutely it was 2,4-D, but I remember smelling it in a different way. It usually smelled like freshly cured leather. Now, for some reason, the smell had undertones of raw flesh. Mary Howell looked across the table at Klaus. So he goes to an orthopedic surgeon. And get this, it was June, spraying time. Here was a grain farmer, and the doctor thought nothing of the dead arm. He just sent Klaus home with a handful of muscle relaxers and painkillers. Mary Howell got up to clear the dishes and turned around at the sink. By this point, I didn't need a doctor to tell me what was happening. My husband was being poisoned. Klaus, along with his sister Hilke and two younger brothers, Jan and Paul, was raised on a farm down the road. Their father arrived at Ellis Island from Germany at the age of 14. This was 1927, and with him were his grandmother and six siblings. His parents, Klaus's paternal grandparents, had already passed away. Weary of mounting political turmoil, they had sold their farm and fled Europe in search of a new future in America. After World War I, Germans were not allowed to own land in the eastern United States, so the family moved to North Dakota and leased land to grow wheat. The crop failed, and in 1931, alarmed by the worsening conditions of the Dust Bowl, they moved again to a dairy farm in Bainbridge, New York, where they finally prospered. But there were too many siblings and not enough land. In 1957, Klaus's father and his young wife broke away from the family and moved their dairy cattle to Penyan, a small town in the Finger Lakes region. Klaus was two years old at the time. They earned a profit the first year, then earned still more as new agriculture technology swept onto their farm, improved grain varieties, including hybrid corn and high-yielding wheat, and, more important, the widespread use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides, boosted yields beyond anything they could have imagined. As Klaus grew older and assumed more responsibility on the farm, he watched one record-shattering harvest after the next. My father would stand at the grain bin and just scratch his head, he told me. The yields, which more than doubled in one year, fueled explosive profits. It was a magical time. 